When you meet someone new, one of the first questions you usually ask is, so what do you do? And I get it, work plays a big part of our lives. And when you're in your 20s, it can feel like there's a lot of things to consider. I mean, we're at the very start of our careers. We're figuring stuff out. And when it comes to work, we want to be good at it. We want to be productive. We want to get the most out of the experience. We want it to be part of us. Roommate lah. For most of us, 2020 threw a massive spanner in the works. All of a sudden, we were working from home. Our days were filled with virtual meetings, endless emails, and relentless messages. In fact, studies are now indicating that the pandemic workday is nearly an hour longer. I mean, it's not exactly new. Work days have been getting longer. Owning a phone means that we can be reached at any time of the day. But between the constant communication and the fact that our living spaces have been turned into makeshift offices, it can feel like we're working all the time. What does this mean for us? Is it actually possible to invest in a career and still have a life? Is work supposed to find us in this all-encompassing way? Or is there something wrong with the system? The way I see it, Productivity is basically how efficient you are at getting a job done. It's a way of measuring output, and ultimately, that's reflected on how you're getting paid. One is to really help you to plan out your career progression in terms of what new skills you need to develop and where you go from where you are uh, at the moment. Um, so that's for development and career. The other one is really just around pay, right? Because at the end of the you know, financial year or, or performance year, uh, HR will need to make certain uh, salary decisions. So productivity is uh, important is because, again, there is expectation from the employee perspective that what gets tracked, gets measured, gets done, right? So from an employee perspective, uh, productivity is, is important because there is a cost aspect to salary and as well as uh, outputs, right, uh, that the person is producing. So career development and pay. That's what it comes down to. Or at least that's how I understand it. And that's exactly why we're all stuck on this hamster wheel, constantly chasing for more. Maybe this way of thinking about productivity made more sense back then when it applied to things like manufacturing and factory lines. That was one clear goal in terms of output. Our economy has changed, right? So, you know, from a manufacturing-based uh, economy to a more services-based, you know, uh, economy. If I go back to the first uh, industrial revolution, where there's manufacturing and production, right? Because work is probably less complex in a sense, and I think uh, things are a bit were well, a bit more straightforward, right? In terms of measuring outputs. That was a clear and simple measure of efficiency. So why are we still stuck on the same principle when work has changed so much? I think it's kind of like balloon that expanded in the internet age and sort of like with the rise of constant communication platforms like Slack and texting and email and all of that kind of hyper plugged in sort of this, these modes of communication that have sort of made it necessary or enabled everyone to be working all the time. So like identification with work because we're a little bit more idealistic and we want to like approach work through the sense of self-fulfillment and satisfaction of like we're doing something to the, to the betterment of humanity rather than just making a paycheck. In this era of free market capitalism, if you don't have enough, you're not working hard enough. But what separates our life from our work? The sole provision of work is to make a living, to survive. But in our lives, we also need to have the freedom to think and express, the desire to learn and connect. So for many of us, when work and life become inseparable, work can start to consume you, leading into how you see yourself. Then you start questioning yourself and the meaning of the work you're doing. After all, if life and work are one, then the meaning of your work is the meaning of your life? That can't be right. Right? All this on top of not being paid enough and not being hurt in meaningful ways. This has serious repercussions to our mental health. And perhaps I'm exaggerating, but in the process, we also lose the things that make us human. And it doesn't stop there. The culture that we are religiously wrapped up in could become the norm, eventually consuming the generations of people who come after us. So the measure of productivity has become a lot more complex than before. 
But one thing that has remained the same is that we are still expected to create an impact. Your pay and your professional growth depends on it. The one thing that probably hasn't changed over time, the key measurements might have changed, but the actual definition of, like you said, what's doing well at work, um, it's probably impact, right? It's about what you produce, it's the output. Um, now the question is, how do we measure that productivity when it's not so tangible? We sort of have this mentality that like, you have to be on all the time and your company necessitates that because your company needs to grow and your company needs to provide shareholder value for you know people on the board and people who own stock if it's a public company. So I think it's driven by both and I think the technology enables it, but I think the demand that companies want to expand and I think the ultimate goal of a lot of firms in this day and age is to attain funding, attain value for your VCs and then to either go public or sell the company and that's it and it's all motivated by making money and like in order to do that quickly in a profitable sense you need to have workers who are constantly churning for you. Constant grind could lead to burned out. There's always a certain lag between how quickly things need to change and how quickly they actually change. Part of that is because many of today's leaders started their career in a different era. But how does that play out with younger generation of leadership? The leaders who are expected to shape and shepherd a whole new work culture. One where the concept of purpose takes center stage. If I were to generalize, in that generation it was about command and control. And it was not bad, it was just different. Gen X is about control, but then consult. So we want to be involved. And then you come to Gen Y. And for Gen Y, they definitely want to be consulted. No more control elements there at all. You see the consultation, but they also want to create. So they want to be part of the journey of being able to, you know, initiate ideas and so on. If you've ever worked with a boss from a different generation, you'll understand the complexities of addressing different viewpoints. On top of that, more often than not, there's a power distance between you and your superiors that makes it hard to initiate a conversation. So, yes, it's hard, but we need to address this gap. Otherwise, there will always be a mismatch between how we expect it to function and what is actually sustainable. And we're not saying that bosses shouldn't be expected to push us or want us to work hard. Good bosses should do that because they want you to help create value for the team. But who's going to push you to create value for yourself, in your personal life, in your own definition of what fulfillment should be? Really, it can only be you. The perfect intersection and balance of work satisfaction and personal fulfillment probably doesn't exist, or it does in moments and shifts over time. But prioritizing your own fulfillment and growth beyond and away from work is a value only you can create and no one can take away. What do you find fulfillment in? That was a lot to take in. Here on Roommit, we talk about adulting and the financial conundrum no one tells you about. We're here to open that conversation. If you have anything you'd like to share, comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to check out our other videos. Oh, we also have a website. Brought to you with love. Thank you for watching.